If you want to convert more people on your website and you've already looked over your SEO content, made a user-friendly website to use and have call to actions everywhere, but you're still not getting the results you need, there is still a place you might need to look at your about us page. The content on this page can sometimes make people trust you more. It helps people engage and helps them make want to buy with you. It gives you credibility. It helps you connect with your customers and it helps you show how transparent and honest you can be, which is very attractive to someone wanting to buy from you. But it can also do all the opposite of those things if it's not done right. When I see a website that's obviously not a huge corporates page, I will always go and have a look at the About Us page. And it's one of those first pages I visit. I'm not alone. We can see that our visitors also feel the same way about our website. So even if you're shy and you still wish that the internet never made photos and information about us, it's so easily available. I know there's lots of you out there. Um, your About Us page can really make a difference in how people want to buy from you. Think about your website like a store and it will change the way that you see it. Um, so I think that's a really important part of this is to really start to think about how to change our viewpoints around what our website actually is meant to be doing. It's like a store and you wouldn't leave your store unattended, would you? So that's what the About Us page is for. In this episode, we're going to cover some of the common mistakes people make when writing an About Us page, what you should include, what not to include, whether you have to have photos of yourself and of your team, and how an About Us page for a solopreneur can look different to one for a business with a team. We'll cover both. We also talk about boundaries. There's not many quick wins when it comes to marketing, no matter what people say, but getting that About Us page working well would be right up there with everything else in that category of quick wins. Um, so tune in, take notes and write yourself a sizzling about us page that's going to get more of those leads and sales coming in hot. We all want that right. Let's get started. Welcome, this is Mibbit Marketing and I am your host, Rachel Claver. I love helping small business owners become more confident and more capable with their marketing. So this podcast is all here to help you do just that. It's me and the help of some great guests helping you learn new skills, new strategies and ideas. Let's jump in and get started. Hi and welcome to the Mapit Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Claver. I'm just going to adjust my microphone. Should have done that before I set it up. I know. Uh, what can I say? I am a person who doesn't often notice the fine details of things. But when it comes to talking about marketing, I know a lot of little things that are useful to know. Just not so good on the setup stuff. All right, we're going to talk today about about us pages because I have been a content writer and now a content marketing coach for over twenty years. Um, I'm so passionate about the power of content, and I'm passionate about about us pages on websites. Do you know that my favorite place to go on a website when I'm first getting to know you is your about us page? And if it's not in the menu, if it's hidden away somewhere, that makes me grumpy because it immediately tells me that you don't really want me to know about you or you don't think that's important. And it is because I'm buying from you. I want to have a relationship with you. I want to know if you're my sort of person. Um, I have literally fallen in love with products and gone, I'm buying it. And then there's been an about us page that doesn't tell me who the person is, what their background is, what their values are, uh, their story. And I haven't bought from them. Significant purchases. I have gone to service-based businesses that have given me a whole lot of corporate waffle uh, on their About Us page and no personality and gone, I don't want to work with this person. And I'm not alone. There are so many people that are like that. I said that a bit in the introduction. We can see from our stats, from us and from other people, what the problem can be. Excuse the wrestling, by the way. I've got quite a lot of notes for this. So if you hear the odd of paper, that's what it is. All right. So let's just talk a little bit about why it's so important to have a good About Us page. I think the biggest thing is uh, for me is that besides this, like there's stuff around SEO, it is good for search engine optimization if you've got particular words in there, but I don't want you to be punching those words in. Obviously, if it's got your name in there with what you do, that's actually really great because that is good for search engine optimization. If I've got content marketing coach on mine and then it's got my name next to it, it might come up and then it's got Rachel Plava, content marketing coach, click through. It's great. So people searching my name or searching content marketing coach might find me. So it's good that way. Um, it's also really good because it can help provide credibility. I Again, as I say, having a person on there and talking about the person that's on there 
and the face seeing a face immediately says this is a real person it's not a overseas site pretending to be a Kiwi or Australian or wherever we are at site it tells us that this is a real person that I could google and find out some information about it's showing me that this person's not scared to, to have a face and show their face on their website which means they're not hiding anything there's nothing dodgy going on um, so that's really important. I also think there's that the thing for me, the most important thing is the ability to have customer connection. And I mentioned this in the introduction, but for me, there's this idea that in a retail store, like if you walk into a retail store, into an office and there's no one in it, like I work in, a, in an office area where I'm in a separate room to everyone else because I'm a um, complete hermit. Uh, and sometimes I don't know that the uh, other two people that mainly work in, in our office, um, two or three, sometimes I don't know they've all popped out. And I am I hate the fact that someone might walk into the office and think that the office is empty, even though we don't really want lots of people walking in. I mean, you're welcome, but you know what I mean. Um, and but it's that whole customer connection thing, having someone greet you, smiling when you come in, not looking upset, feeling like you can have someone who wants to be your friend or interact with you, not like, you know, best friends forever, but just actually wants to have a relationship with you. And so that customer connection is such an important part of that About Us page. And we're going to talk a little bit about photos and things. I've got, you know, clients and I've got a few really good friends who do not like social media at all, do not like having their faces on the internet. There's reasons for that, some of them, um, and we'll talk about that, but they're not business owners, they're part of a business, and I think once you're a business owner, there is a responsibility to be able to show your face and show who you are. I don't trust, I don't personally trust business businesses where there's no photo of you. Uh, it doesn't have to be a photo of your whole face. We, there's some tricks you can do, or you could do an avatar or things like that, but it's just getting that personal connection and having your name on there. If you don't want to put your name to your business, why the hell are you selling stuff? not trustworthy. Um, I might get some kickback on this one, I feel. All right. So um, it's also transparency and honesty, like be a transparent and honest business owner, show who you are. It's it's, tr it's such a trust thing. It also can help just show the difference of who you are. I, I think that, you know, showing personality in your copy, showing personality in your photos, there is no doubt that people coming to our About Us page, both on our Identify site and my Rachel Plava site, cannot get a picture of our personality. Uh, it's it's going to be that they're going to have to cope with my fun, effervescent, big energy persona uh, if they are part of what I work with you on. And there's who you're going to get. You're not going to get someone who's just going to be serious all the time. Um, I am serious, but I'm going to have to be serious all the time, right? So, so that's going to be obvious. That's part of my brand identity. But it also can show differences by using the language you use, the connection you use, what level of jargon you use, and what level of jargon you don't use. So that's important. It's also partly important to have a storytelling thing. People love story behind brands, why the brand started, why the business started, why it's important, what your values are and your expertise, and not in a blah, 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 I'm so powerful and amazing, but in some way that makes people want to connect. And we'll talk about that a bit later. I think that key thing around brand identity and just building this brand is really important. So a little bit of storytelling is important, but it's that credibility and customer connection that we're really looking to get with that really good About Us page. So that's the why. That's the why. All right. So a couple of things I want to talk about before we start talking about what you're going to do in terms of what's included I um, just realized that I pulled up two lots of podcast notes. I'm just going to separate those ones out because some of you who've been long-term listeners might remember the terrible podcast of, I don't know, I think it was episode something or other 50 or something, where I lost my way uh, a little bit and didn't number things and then couldn't remember what number it was. And people have laughed and laughed with me on that one. We'll try and avoid that today. All right. So just a couple of things I want to talk about in terms of content to avoid on an About Us page. Please look at how much jargon you're using. Sometimes we have to use a bit of industry jargon like lead generation for me or, you know, um, SEO or things like that. There might be a bit of industry jargon. And sometimes it can be a filter to help you decide who you're working with. But lots of jargon on, a, on an About Us page or anywhere on your website actually just makes it feel like you're going, I am cleverer than you. And no one wants that on an About Us page. It, it separates you from the customer. It makes people feel like, you might have all the answers, but you're not going to talk to them in a way that they're going to understand. So really look at reducing any industry jargon. Uh, you also want to make sure that whatever you say on your website, and particularly on your About Us page, 
can't doesn't overpromise. You know, I'm a really big believer. I think I guess Kiwis we tend to underpromise a lot anyway, but don't make promises that you can't keep. You know, it's not a time for us to be aspirational on here. Uh, this is a time for us to actually be honest. Uh, not you know, like if you truly are shit, you don't want to say, look, we're we're really shit at what we do, but. I'm friendly. Well, I don't want to say that. Like, I'm not telling you to be silly about this, but, but, but it is really important not to to overpromise that things that you know you're not going to deliver on. Don't be like the customer I worked with once, who's saying privately was a new customer is someone we haven't pissed off yet. Don't be like that person. Okay. Um, the other thing is you don't want to be doing a lot of, hey, look at me. I am the best person in the universe. Lots of bragging. Again, though, I want to talk to specifically to my Generation X listeners out there, particularly those of you that are female. You're probably not going to ever do that. Like literally you saying that you're confident in something or that you're good at something is you thinking you're bragging. That is not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about over the top, you know, we are the best, we're the most amazing group, we're the people that you have to use every time, don't use anyone else because everyone else is pathetic, that sort of behavior and jargon is what I'm talking about here, I am not talking about being proud of who you are, just to clarify, all right, a lack of transparency, this is that one I was talking about, you know, not showing your faces, not under, not being clear about who you are, that is a really big red flag to me and many other people. Look, and I'm just going to say something about my industry, uh, marketing. It is amazing how many marketing agencies I look at because I always look at their websites who don't have any information about who owns it and doesn't have photos of those people or their names. And I don't, I don't know why anyone would trust that. I just don't know why. Um, do you? I mean, I'd love to hear from you if you do trust people when they don't have that stuff on their websites, but I just don't, I don't. Um, any negativity and complaining? Obviously, I'm having a big old moan today about stuff, but I'm not going to put that on my About Us page. So don't just remove negativity, complaining, obviously, on there. Uh, make sure that it's up to date. I have on my diary to update every every year. Um, I've just done a refresh. I need to do a little bit more refreshing. Um, but things change, you know, making sure that if you've got staff changes and stuff like that, that there is a task that changes that date and information. We've re we've just recently moved someone who's moved on um, to other things because, um, you know, we don't want to have her name on there. It's not good for her or us, for her, what she's doing. Um, and obviously, we don't want to be falsely pretending she's in our team. Um, so, you know, keeping that date uh, information up to date is really important. Um, and also just as, as roles change as well, you know, we've had a couple of people who've moved up the ranks or changed their role a bit. And so we want to do that. And then, you know, making sure that your images are relevant. Now, um, there's a thing around professionality and, and unprofessional. We've consciously chosen to show, for example, Rod in a T-shirt because that's what he wears every day. He is most comfortable wearing a T-shirt. His biggest joy is being able to wear T-shirts to work. Um, after having years of corporate, um, he does wear a shirt in some of his photos, but it doesn't all the time. Um, my photos of me are going to look at my goofy side and things like that because I really just want to filter through the people who just want to like have this person who's got to be like super perfect and professional. So your levels of unprofessional or professional are going to be different. Um, and definitely my more, I guess, unprofessional photos or the ones showing a bit more life definitely are, are more on my Rachel Plava one where there's more speaking and things like that. So the level of what is professional and unprofessional is very much about what you see as your brand and your personal brand. I'm totally 100% in for showing off tattoos and piercings and individual things, colored hair, anything that's going to make you look and stand out different because it's going to help people notice and remember you as long as it's consistent. So if you've got photos everywhere with you with purple hair, but your hair is now green, um, there's, there's an issue. You have to keep those things updated. Okay, so, so those are some of the things you want to avoid. Now, before we jump into the content, I do want to talk a little bit about things you can do if you don't want to have your photo on there. So preference is to have a really good head at least a good head and shoulders photo of you uh, because that means that people can see your face they can imagine who they're talking to if they're emailing you or talking to you on the phone it's ready if they're doing a zoom call they can kind of get an idea of who you are there's no big shock you know I was talking to someone a few weeks ago who um, is very nervous about showing her face on socials and things like that but all her meetings are on zoom look if they've got a problem with the way that you look they're going to have a problem at some point. May as well let them know early on. That's what I always think. Excuse me, so do we call? So, so that's one of the things that I would say is really important is to make sure that you kind of get over yourself a bit. But if you really have a problem, then um, there are some things that you can do. 
All right. So we're talking a little bit. I had to take a little break to get a drink of water. Otherwise, I'd have been eh, eh, all the way through. All right. So let's just talk a little bit about that whole idea. So obviously, as I said, I want to make sure you've got as many head and shoulders or pictures as possible and fill them through the whole website. Like photos are so important of your team, like less stock photos, more, more real photos is so important. If you are really, really camera shy, think about photos that are what I'd call in situ photos. So it doesn't have to have your full face showing. You could have your face you know, one side, you could even have like the back of your face where you're talking to a client or something like that to get that feeling or interaction with it. If you really have a problem, if you are in the equivalent of the witness protection program, if you are, you know, like I've got, a, I do have a friend who just does not want to have her face on social media at all. She has no social media. She has, and you know, she's been asked to buy her work, you know, you know, negotiating things like avatars, having those ones, you know, like Wilson from, um, Tim, the toolbox tailor, I can't remember the name of his his um, home improvement, that program, they said Wilson used to like appear and you only ever see his eyes. You can do things like that where you're playful. You could have a prop and you could all have a prop and it covers part of your face so that it's like a little bit there, but not enough to be recognizable. There are lots of things you can do that can help that and still is playful, which is totally okay. So be playful and be creative to find another solution if you really don't want those head and shoulder shots. But I would really recommend having a full face for everyone if you can get yourself into that. Otherwise, there's other things you can do. Obviously, you can add your company logo to this page. Uh, you could think about having some illustrations of your team or staff, of, you know, either doing avatars or doing actual illustrations. You can get them to draw something. They could have a picture of their pet or you can have a picture of your pet. Um, you could actually, if you're doing a, a staff page adding a picture of your team member that's a pet is always quite cute um it, it helps filter through the people who also love pets it's also good um you could have some infographics you could have office or workspace images can be really good make sure they've got people in them even though um they don't have to have their faces showing but you want to have people people don't just want a stark photo of that you could have if you are a um, service provider and you're out on the road, have a picture of you standing in front of your car so people can recognize it in traffic. Um, you know, big pictures of fleets is, is not always cool, but, you know, showing what your trucks look like or your vans look like is quite good because then people recognize them and can keep their minds out. It's kind of that whole thing of, you know, when you're pregnant, all you see is pregnant woman. When you're a mother, all you do is see is other mothers and all those sort of things. So it can actually help people get more brand recognition as well. Um, you could also add in visual um, quotes from clients and testimonials just to add in a bit of breakup there. But again, preferable always to have those photos. Okay, so that's that photo thing. Um, I am a big believer in always having photos. Um, have a really good clear head and shoulders photo. Uh, it's important. If you uh, hate smiling in photos, just get someone to be relaxed and just get to take a bunch of photos, make you laugh. It's better to have a smiling animated face than a super serious one. Um, super serious isn't going to get you the clients. Um, you have to be super goofy, but just, you know, a little friendly. Um, and there's um, some cool things you can do. Um, you can just slightly bring your chin forward, move your um, eyes slightly. So bring your chin forward, move your head a little bit down. And then just really smile with your eyes, even if your face is serious. So just imagine smiling with your eyes. And that can actually help you get quite an animated look and bring over your best qualities as well. Also helps uh, having a photographer that knows what they're doing. All right, let's just talk a little bit about what should be on and about us page with all of that to do. So there's two ones I wanted to talk about. The first is for a solopreneur. And then, which I know quite a few people who are listening this is. And then there's the team because there's differences. Um, and I've got both. I've got my Rachel Plava site, which is just my solopreneur one. And I need to rewrite my About Us page. It's um, I've really been doing a little bit of it, but it's really out of date. Um, so I'm going to be doing this alongside and hopefully have it done by Friday. Who knows? You'll all notice if I haven't because we're not following any of the instructions on here. Um, okay, so with a solopreneur, the first thing is don't use we. Please don't use we. God, it's one of my big bugbears is just to have that we in there when I know that it's just you. You do not need to pretend that you are bigger than you are. If you want to be bigger and you know you're going to be bigger, start with I, change to we later. Okay? It is okay. People will work with an I. They don't need to work with a we that is pretending to be a we that's actually an I. No, 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 no. Even if you're working on corporates, you don't have to do that. Okay? If you literally are a we, then it's okay. But don't, don't lie. It's just dumb. 
also that counts even if you've got a VA. If you've got a VA and they have no customer content and contact and nothing else, then it's an I. If they are someone who is helping you with admin and they do have customer contact, it's a we because there's two people now that are having contact with a customer. That's my general rule of thumb. If there's definitely another person that's a customer contact, that's important. If you're using overseas help and you treat that person as a team member and they are someone that you're going to have again as customer contact, they definitely are on there. So for us, we have Judy. She is uh, based in the Philippines and I consider her an equal member of our team as anyone else. I don't actually have Vera who edits this podcast um, on there because my podcast kind of sits aside. That doesn't mean that I don't consider her a valuable team member, but she doesn't have any direct customer contact. So Vera, if you're listening, you know I value you. Um, but I don't have her in there, but she would be part of what I allude to in our About Us, which is we have other people in our team that help with things. And she is, you know, I've referred her to other customers and things like that. So it's not like, I'm hiding her, but she's just not relevant to be on my about us team. So we just generally have anyone that's going to have customer contact or might directly answer an email or something like that. Anyone else that's not like that isn't often on our about us page. And that's just a personal choice. Um, it's also because we sometimes use people who are just working for us kind of like as a um as a contractor. And so they would not be, they might evolve and change, not always be there. So they're not on our about us page. We have the more permanent fixtures on there. Um, but I digress, that's for having a team. I'm sorry. Okay, so solopreneurs. So I guess the key things are is that you want to make sure that you know where you're taking people to. So I guess that at the end at your page, you need to make sure you've got a call to action. And a lot of people leave this off on the about us page. So if on an e-commerce side, it might be to go and shop. Um, so it might be like you could talk about your favorite product or something like that and check it out. It could be that you're going to do like a booking a, a consultation or getting a contact form on there. Anything that's going to take them to the next step of either working from you or buying from you or just, you know, sharing with them um, the, like a collection of stuff on a Shopify site, for example. You could do like sharing the linen collection or something and that's how you started so they can share it. So you can have something like that. A call to action is really important on that About Us page. Um, it's also quite good to have a testimonial on there as well. Um, I prefer not to have a testimonial page on my website. I believe you should have testimonials on pretty much every page and have them like threaded through. So very welcome to have a testimonial on there. Um, but we want to make sure that we have a personable feeling on here. Start with an introduction to yourself. You can even say, hi, it's so lovely to see you here. Start with a welcome. If it's a solopreneur, start with a welcome, something that makes them feel good. It's lovely to hear from you. Um, hey, it's great to have you on this on my website or my little part of the internet. Anything that makes them feel like they're going to work with you. Now, if you're working in a very serious corporate place, you might want to make that a little bit more formal, but I wouldn't go too formal. I think we have this idea that corporates need super, super formal and they don't. You're still talking to a person. So you can still say, you know, welcome um, or, you know, um, it's, you know, it's great to meet you. My name, who my name? My name is Rachel. It's lovely to meet you. Um, I thought I'd share with you a little bit about my background. Now you might want to say that sentence, but but we want to start with an introduction of you and why you are different. So I would, you know, start with something that shows your definite difference between everybody else. And so that's going to take a bit of working out. And you should have worked that out if you've worked with a marketing strategist like me, um, if you've done some work with a brand strategist or you've done work uh, with anyone in terms of your content, this is something you need to know is we need to know what makes you different because that's what they're going to choose. When you're a solopreneur, it's all about what makes you the difference to anyone else. So we need to have that in there. And then I want to hear a bit of your personal story, how you got started. Now, please, this is not a time to write a novel. Just a little story, just a little story. And truly, like if you literally bought this product, because bought this business, it doesn't have to be deep. It can be, you know, something like, I think I, you know, I fell in love with XX product because da, da, da. Um, and so I love that I can sell them now. It could be that. Um, I, I fell in love with um, this red plastic mug because I discovered it's going to make me a lot of money because you guys are all buying it. Probably not that sort of information, but it could be, you know, um, the moment I, I saw these plastic mugs, I knew I had to have them as something I could sell to you because I remember needing to have one of these on a big journey and needing lots of coffee I don't know what I'm talking about okay so you need to have that introduction that personal story 
I think it's a good idea to have something that alludes to your brand values. You don't need to say, here are my brand values. Honestly, that is the biggest thing. But if you if you allude to them, I again I always say I've got a I've got a podcast about values. Uh, but you know, I always say two, three, four max values, but having a few values in there would be that would be good to allude in there too. Um, and also around expertise. So making sure that you can actually tell people kind of your background. So you can say things like, you know, I'm a trained psychologist. You can say, you know, I've, I, I, I could say I'm a trained teacher. I've been working in content marketing for over 25 years or 20, 20 years. Gosh, it's light on the it's 20 years, Rachel, not 25. Um, you know, I can do that. So you just kind of dream it through. You don't make a big list. There's not a CV. It's just kind of threaded through with what you're doing. Add a testimony if you want to, and then have that call to action. Now, if you have got certifications, awards, social proof that would make people trust you, I would just have them as images at the bottom of your page. I wouldn't talk about them in the copy because nah, 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 who wants to hear that sort of stuff? But it does give that value. So for example, you can say, you know, hi there, my name is Rachel Clive. I'm the owner, um, the co-owner and founder of Identify Marketing. I've been working in marketing for over 20 years in some type of form, and I love helping small business owners with their marketing. I haven't written this. I'm doing this on the cloud, by the way. The thing I love most is watching the light go on in small business owners' heads when eyes, see if you can tell I'm making up this spot, eyes when they understand that marketing that they can do can make a difference to their business and grow. I got started in this business because I started my life as a content marketer and really wanted to help other small business owners be able to do things themselves without having to pay for people like me to do it. So I started off at my own agency in 2016 and I've never looked back. I am passionate about helping small business owners become that confident marketer and get them ready for growth. We believe that every small business owner has it in them and I would love to help you. I am a trained teacher. I've been a content marketer for over 20 years and I um, have been published in quite a few different publications and run courses around New Zealand. It sounds awfully now, right? But I'm doing it. Here, here's an example of a recent testimony, uh, one of my recent customers. Here's a testimonial. And then you say, so I'd love it if you could come and get in contact with me. Um, just make a time in the time below and um, we'll be able to chat. So you could do something like that. You can see I was flapping it back because I was getting a little bit like, oh, this is getting harder to do off the cuff. But that kind of format works really well. Um, and so that could be what you could do to help that, that happen. Now, when you are working with a small business, it's a little bit different. You need to still have that feel of an introduction about yourself if you're the business owner. So you have that at the top, an introduction. So the way we do it is we have me and Rod because we're the co-owners of Identify. And so we've got a photo of us and then talk a little bit about our values and about who we are and how we work in that little bit. Sorry for um, messing up with the, the microphone. So we do that first. And then we have each person after that with who they are, photo of them, a name, and then a bit of a bio. And then in my one, and um, I, because I'm the main person that people make a time with for marketing information, we also have like a link to get in contact. I've got a link to my media kit. I've got a link to my, our Facebook group. And I've also got a link uh, to, I think I've got a link to my Substack as well. And then Rod has a link in his to make a time with us. And then no one else has links in theirs. Um, and so you can do it that way. So it's slightly different structure. You would have like a little summary thing at the top and then you have your people underneath. And again, as I say, I just recommend having those people that are going to be front of hate face or be meeting people in person, meeting people on Zoom or talking to them on email or on um, the phone. Those are the people that are best to have on there because those are the people that have got that thing so people can go oh that's the name of that person I really think people are nicer to people when they've got an idea of what that person who that person is and they feel like they've they've had some sort of connection with them and I think that helps a lot so it's a slightly different thing you wouldn't have so much about your personal story in the one with the team it's less in there you could have a bit of that maybe in your own bio on there and when you're getting your team to write their bios, you can ask them to share a fun fact about themselves or a personal story or a favorite thing um, just to add a bit of flavor. So you could do something like tell everyone what your favorite animal what is or what you'd be if you're an animal. Tell everyone what your favorite thing to do on the weekend is or, uh, you know, the favorite thing about working here. 
whatever it is, um, make it as make it as fun as possible. Um, and so those bits can help. And you can actually then use some of that information to post about those people individually through the year as well. Our about us can create us some evergreen content as well. So there's that's what I would make sure I have on my about us for solopreneurs and then for groups. Uh, it's really important. Do make sure that you have conversations with your your team if you are doing a team about expectations and where it will be used. And just you know, make sure, you know, we don't really talk a lot about social media policies these days, but I do think having a conversation about that sort of expectation of where they'll be seen um, online as you're bringing people into the team is super important and something that should be discussed. All right, I hope you found this helpful and um, and useful. I do do a substack every week that has a summary and I'll have that kind of template kind of what needs to be included for a solopreneur and also for a business owner, they're slightly different in there for you to have a look at uh, so that you can see that and it comes out on a Friday so there's a link to it in the show notes if you'd like to subscribe to that and you don't already get it um, there's a subscription that's free and it just means that you'll get a link to that and to this podcast every Friday to help you with the notes if you have missed out because I'm aware that my show notes themselves are often just a bit of an intro or a summary but the um, information on that Friday email can help you significantly and have a great week. Uh, next week, I am talking to you about problem-solving techniques you can use in a small business. Until then, see ya. I hope this was a really helpful podcast for you. I really would hope that you would take the notes that you've taken during the podcast or little ideas to go and rework your About Us page if you know it's not working for you. If you want some free feedback on your podcast, on your About Us page, please come and be part of the Map It Marketing Facebook group. You can have a look. There's a link for it in the show notes and you can share it in there and I or someone else will give you feedback in there to give you some suggestions of how to make it more engaging, especially if you redo it and you want to have feedback on your work. That's a great place to do that and I'm happy to gift you that time for free in the Facebook group where other people can learn from sharing with you. Right, I hope you have a great week. Do come and be part of our Map It Marketing community. Do have a wonderful week and if you're in Auckland or other areas affected by the floods, I hope that things are coming down for you and you're starting to get back to a new stage of normal. Catch you next week. If you love what you heard today, be sure to hit subscribe. And if you love this episode in particular, I'd love it if you shared it on social media. Remember to tag me in so I can say thank you. Have a great week and we'll talk soon.